Section 11.1, Empirical and Theoretical Probabilities. Probabilities used in many areas, and you can read these off the screen here. Um, you're going to see it a lot this year. We have a presidential election, so you're going to see polls for the election. And mathematical problems relating to games of chance were studied by a number of mathematicians of the Renaissance, and those are listed on this slide here. So in order to study probability, we need some definitions. An experiment is a controlled operation that yields a set of results. The possible outcomes of an experiment are possible results, I'm sorry, of an experiment are called the outcomes, and an event is a subcollection of the outcomes of an experiment. Empirical probability is the relative frequency of an occurrence of an event and is determined by actually observing the experiment, compared to theoretical probability, which is determined by simply studying the outcomes that can occur for an experiment and calculating those probabilities. So when working with empirical probability to find the probability of an event A, we take the number of times event A occurred and divide it by the number of times we performed the experiment. So for instance, if we tossed a coin 100 times and we got 44 heads, find the empirical probability of getting a head. So that would be 44 over 100 or 0.44. At Virgin Music Store in Times Square, 60 people entering the store were selected at random and asked to choose their favorite type of music. Of the 60, 12 chose rock, 16 chose country, 8 chose classical, and 24 chose something else. Determine the empirical probability the next person entering the store favors rock music. So we see that 12 people preferred rock music, so that's going to be 12 over 60 or one-fifth. Country was 16 people, so 16 over 60 or 4 over 15. The last 30 boat rentals at Green Lake Boat Rentals were 14 sunfish, 10 kayaks, and 6 rowboats. Use this information to determine the following empirical probabilities. What's the probability the next boat, rent, boat rented is a rowboat? And we see there were six rowboats rented, so six over 30, which simplifies to one over five. Probability the next boat rented is a kayak. There were 10 kayaks rented out of 30, so 10 over 30 or one third. And probability the next boat rented is a sunfish, and there were 14 sunfish rented out of 30. 14 over 30 simplifies to 7 out of 15. Of the last 60 people who went to the cash register at a department store, 15 had blonde hair, 20 had black hair, 18 had brown hair, and 7 had red hair. Find the empirical probability that the next person to come to the cash register has brown hair. So we have 18 out of 60, which simplifies to 3 out of 10, which would be 0.3 as a decimal. In an election for student council president at Sage College, 80 students were polled and asked who they'd vote for. The results are shown in the table. If one student from Sage College is selected at random, determine the following probability. The probability this student planned to vote for Allison. We see in the table that 22 students selected Allison, so the probability of voting for Allison would be 22 divided by 80, which simplifies to 11 over 40, which is equal to 0.275. Probability that the student planned to vote for Kimberly. From the table, we see 20 students selected Kimberly. So the probability of voting for Kimberly would be 20 over 80, which simplifies to one quarter, which is 0.25. The law of large numbers states that probability statements apply in practice to a large number of trials, not to a single trial. It's the relative frequency in the long run that is accurately predictable, not individual results. So if we take a look at this table, if we tossed a fair coin 10 times, we would expect to get five heads, but we may only get four heads, seven heads, three heads. As we increase the number of tosses, we would expect the relative frequency of heads to approach what we know to be the theoretical probability of getting a head, which is 0.5. If an outcome of an experiment has the same chance of occurring as any other outcome, they're said to be equally likely. Theoretical probability of an event can be calculated using this formula, the number of events favorable to E divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So we're going to roll a fair die and we're going to find a series of probabilities here. We want to find the probability that we get a 2. So we know there are six outcomes, but there's only one that results in a 2, so the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 out of 6. The probability of rolling an even number, and that can occur in three ways. We can get a 2 or 4 or a 6. So the probability of rolling an even number is 3 over 6, or 1 half. Probability of getting a number greater than 3, and there are four, three outcomes that fit that category, 4, 5, or 6, so that probability is 3 over 6, which is equal to 1 half. The probability of getting a 7, there's no outcome that results in a 7, so therefore this probability is 0. 
and then getting an outcome that's less than seven, that probability must be one because all the outcomes are less than seven, so it's six over six or one. Important probability facts. The probability of an event that cannot occur is zero, and this is called impossible. The probability of an event that must occur is one. This is called a sure or a certain event. Every probability is a number between zero and one, and the sum of the probabilities of all possible outcomes of an experiment must equal one. Now we can use this fact to help us in many problems. The probability of A occurring plus the probability of A not occurring must equal one, which can be rewritten like this. The probability that A does not occur equals one minus the probability of A. And this is called the complement rule. And if you remember, we learned about complements in our unit on sets. So if the probability of A is equal to 0.72, what is the probability that event A does not occur? Probability event A does not occur is 1 minus the probability of A, so we're going to take 1 minus 0.72, and we find that the probability of not A is equal to 0.28. Let's work some problems using a deck of cards. This is called a poker deck. It has 52 cards, 4 suits, 13 cards per suit. The hearts and the diamonds are called red cards. The clubs and the spades are called black cards. There are also kings, queens, and jacks, which are called picture or face cards. So let's find some probabilities if we draw one card from a deck. Let's find the probability that we get an eight. So if we look at the card deck, we notice there are four eights in there. So the probability of getting an eight would be four out of 52 or one out of 13. The probability we don't get an eight, we can use our complement rule. Probability of not getting an eight is one minus the probability that we get an eight, which is simplifies to 12 out of 13. The probability that we get a club. We could do this actually two ways. There's 13 clubs in the deck, so the probability of getting a club is 13 over 52 or one quarter. We also can look at it as the fact that there are four suits. They're all equally likely, so the probability of getting any one suit, for instance, the club, would be one out of four. The probability that we get a picture card. Okay, there's three picture cards per suit, and there's four suits, so there's a total of 12 picture cards in the deck. So this is 12 out of 52, or 3 over 13. The probability that we select a single card that's a heart and a spade. The word and means both events must occur, and this is not possible because there is no card that is both. So this probability is equal to 0. The probability that we get a card greater than 5 and less than 9. So greater than 5 means we start at 6, 7, and 8, and then we stop because we want the card to be less than 9. So there's three per suit times four suits, so there's 12 cards. So this is 12 over 52, or three out of 13. Expected value or expectation. So expectation is often used to determine the expected results of an experiment or business venture over the long term. And to calculate the expected value, we take each outcome, multiply it by the probability of how likely it is to occur, and then add that up for all the possible outcomes of the experiment. So let's work an example. JetBlue Airlines is considering adding a route from Boston to Minneapolis. Before making a decision, the company needs to consider many factors, including potential profit or loss. After considerable research, JetBlue estimates that if it adds the route, there's a 60% chance of making $800,000, there's one outcome, 10% chance of breaking even, there's a second outcome, and a 30% chance of losing a million dollars. How much can JetBlue expect to make annually on this route? So again, we have three outcomes, 800,000 with a probability of 0.6. Uh, breaking even means no, no gain, no loss, so zero with a probability of 0.1, and losing a million dollars with a probability of 0.3. So we go ahead and put that together in our formula, and we come up with JetBlue's expectation of $180,000 in the long run. So if the company added routes like this with those particular outcomes and probabilities, then in the long run, it would expect to have an average gain of $180,000 per route. However, you also have to remember there was a 30% chance they would lose a million dollars on that particular route or any route with these probabilities and amounts. Um, okay, another example. Teresa is taking a multiple choice test in which there are four possible answers for each question. The instructor indicated that she will be awarded three points for each correct answer and lose one point for an incorrect answer. No points will be awarded or subtracted for answers left blank. If she doesn't know the answer, should she guess? So let's figure out, and then also, if she can eliminate one of the possible answers, is it to her advantage or disadvantage to guess? 
So let's answer the first question, uh, the first part. Expected value if she's going to guess. <clears throat> There's four answers and one is correct. If she's guessing, the probability she gets the question correct is one out of four. And when she does that, and probability she gets it wrong is three out of four. When she gets the question correct, she gets three points. When she gets it incorrect, she loses a point. And if we simplify her expectation here, we come out with an expectation of zero. So there's no gain to guessing. There's no penalty to guessing. So in the long run, she wouldn't expect to gain or lose if she guesses, if she can't eliminate any answers. Now, if she can eliminate an answer, now there's only three answers to pick from. So now the probability she gets it correct is going to be one out of three. The probability she gets it incorrect is two out of three. The same points that her, her instructor said she would give her three points if it's correct. She loses a point if it's incorrect. And if we simplify this, we come up with an expectation of one third. So in the long run, it would definitely be to her advantage to guess because she can gain a third of a point each time she guesses when she can eliminate one of the choices. When Josh attends a charity event, he's given a free ticket for a $50 door prize. There's a total of 100 tickets given out. Determine his expectation of winning the door prize. Okay, so there's one out, two outcomes. Winning, one out of 100, and he gets $50. The probability he doesn't win is 99 out of 100, and when he loses, he doesn't lose anything because the ticket was free. And when we figure out his expectation, he comes out with an expectation of 50 cents. So it's definitely to his advantage to go ahead and participate in this drawing. Now, the fair ticket price is the amount to be paid that will result in an expected value of zero. The fair price may be find, found by adding the cost to play to the expected value. So in a game of chance, the expected value was found to be a dollar, negative $1.50 and the cost to play was $4. Determine the fair price to play the game. So remember, fair price is the expected value plus the cost to play. So the expectation here was negative $1.50 it costs $4 to play, so the fair ticket price here would be $2.50, and that would result in an expected value of zero. Suppose you're playing a game in which you spin the pointer, and you're awarded the amount shown on the, uh, under the pointer. If it costs $10 to play the game, determine the expectation of the person who plays the game, and then the fair ticket price to play the game. Okay, so <clears throat> there's three, four outcomes, rather, $2, $10, $15, and $20, and if you notice... On the top part here, half of the circle is divided into four parts. Each of these is one eighth. So the probability of landing on $2 is actually three eighths. Now when I when, land on $2, I had to pay $10 to play. So I actually only win $8. I lose $8 rather. And then $10, um, same thing, three eighths. I play $10, pay $10 to play. So I, my net gain here is zero. If I land on the $15 spot, which is uh, probability of one eighth, I get $10, I, um, I'm sorry, I win $15, but I pay $10 to play, so I end up gaining $5. And then finally, the $20 spot, also probability of one eighth, and I end up gaining $10. And if I put all those parts together, my expectation is negative $1.13. So in the long run, if I play this game over and over again, I would expect to lose on average $1.13. And the fair ticket price is going to be that expectation plus the cost to play, so the fair ticket price for this game would be $8.87. Section 11.4 is tree diagrams. And we're going to cover the counting principle here and also in a subsequent section. If a first experiment can be performed in M ways and a second experiment in N distinct ways, then the two experiments in that order can be performed in M times N ways. Again, the sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes of the experiment, and a sample point is an individual outcome in the sample space. And tree diagrams are helpful to determining sample spaces. So for example, we have a box that has four marbles, one red, one green, one blue, and one brown. If we select two marbles, determine the number of sample points if we replace the first marble before we select the second marble. Okay, so the first time we pick, there's four marbles to pick from. We put pick the marble, look at the color, put it back, and then pick again, there's four more to pick from. So the number of sample points is going to be four times four or 16. Now, if we don't replace after the first draw, how many sample points do we have? So we have four to pick from the first time. We pick our marble, look at the color, put it aside. We don't put it back in. So we're going to have now four, time, four models to pick from the first time and three the second time. So this time we have 12 sample points. 
John is buying a new computer system. He can select from four different monitors, three different keyboards, and five different printers. Assuming his system will include one of each, how many different systems can he select from? So we're simply going to multiply four times three times five. So he's got 60 different computer systems. A radio station has two tickets to give away to a Blake Shelton concert. It held a contest and narrowed the possible recipients down to four people, Christine, Mike, Larry, and Phyllis. The names of two of these people will be selected at random from a hat, and the two people selected will be awarded the tickets. Use the counting principle to determine the number of points in the sample space. So this is sampling without replacement because when we pick the first winner, we're not going to put them back in. So we're going to have four times three or 12 sample points. Construct a tree diagram and list the sample space. And here's the tree diagram. So here's our first selection here. And then when we go to our second selection, the first person we picked is not going to be in there again the second time. And here's our 12 sample points. Determine the probability that Christine is selected. So we look at all of our outcomes and we say, how many outcomes do we have where we have Christine? There's 12 altogether and six of these, if we notice there's three here, there's one, two, three more here, so there's six altogether. So the probability that Christine is selected is gonna be six out of 12 or one half. Find the probability that Christine is selected and then Mike. There's only one of those <clears throat> outcomes that meets that criteria, so this probability is gonna be one out of 12. Two balls are to be selected with replacement from a bag that contains one red, one blue, one green, and one orange. Use the counting principle to determine the number of points in the sample space. So that's going to be 4 times 4 or 16. Construct a tree diagram and list the sample space. First ball selected can be red, blue, green, or orange, and we're doing with replacement. So the second ball, same colored ball, can be selected twice, and here's our tree diagram. So first colored ball here. Second time we can pick, we put the first ball back so we can pick from the same four balls on the second draw. Determine the probability that the red ball is selected twice. So we look at our outcomes, <clears throat> and there's only one where the red ball was selected twice. So there's one out of 16. Determine the probability that neither ball selected is orange. So if we look through here, there's nine sample points that don't have an orange ball. So this probability is going to be 9 over 16. Determine the probability the orange ball is selected at least once. Now we could count the outcomes. We could also use the complement rule. There's seven outcomes where we have at least one orange ball, so seven out of 16. And you notice this event is complementary to the last event when we had um, uh, no orange balls. And that leads to the probability of an event happening at least once is one minus the probability that the event does not happen. So for example, if you're planting flowers, suppose the probability of not getting any red flowers from the seeds planted is two out of seven. Then the probability of getting at least one red flower is one minus two over seven or five sevenths.